Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Howie Zales podcast show, The Unexpected Entrepreneur. We have a special guest today for show number two. Uh, Brian Nolay and I go way back, almost 20 years, we worked together at the World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, Brian is a lighting uh, professional who worked in movies and TV shows, and now at the ripe old age of 50-something, sorry, Brian, uh, cool. he has turned author. Welcome, Brian Nolay. Howie Zales, my man. Well, we do go back. Right. So, but this is a Welcome new to the show, man. New chapter. Thank you. Thank you. This is a new chapter for us. So, and definitely a new chapter for you. So, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's super grateful for, uh, for you to be here. And um, let's start off. So, um, what is the current state of publishing? Uh, and how do you decide whether to self publish, not self publish, or, you know, tell us about it? Well, you know, it's, it's, interesting because I um, it says I'm new to being an author. I've been an author for years and years. I'm just not a published author. Um, but for a long time, there was sort of a stigma attached to anyone self-publishing. You know, you weren't really an author until someone said, well, I love your book. I'm going to buy it from you and I'm going to publish it for you. Um, but it's really nice that in this day and age with Amazon and, and different platforms that you can publish your own book, that you can be a published author. And it doesn't quite carry that stigma. So for me, um, it's exciting because I've been down the route of sending uh, submissions to agents and, and, you know, getting rejection letters. And it's a, it's a very disheartening process. And, you know, I'm at the point now where I just want to get my books out there for people to read them and enjoy them. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the route that I'm going. Uh, it's something that gives me incredible fulfillment. If I make any money, great. If I don't, great. The best thing I can get is someone reading my book and saying, that was awesome. That was entertaining. So that's what I'm going for. And uh, I'm super excited about it. Now, um, why, why writing? What, what, what is, what's your passion about writing that uh, you know, inspires you? I've been writing my whole life. And I write everything. I love to write children's books. I love to write uh Children's, I like a lot of children's poetry. I love to write, I have a couple novels in the works. I have some short stories. I love to write very macabre stuff, very creepy stuff. Um, and I love to write comedy. Um, I, I've always done it. And it's just a, a, it's just a matter of wanting to share it with people and wanting to get it out there. Um, and I, I like the children's story part of it because I find it so fun. And anybody that has had children knows that they're going to be reading books. And when you write children's books, you kind of have to write for the child, but you also write for the adult because that's the person who's going to read it Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. If that book is, is irritating and you don't enjoy it, you're not going to want to pick it up again. So when you write the book, you want, it some, you want a book that's going to entertain the adult and the child. And the adult's like, man, that was a great little book. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the art. I enjoyed the the. The, the flow of the verse and it kind of, it worked on a couple different levels. So that's what I strive to do. And I think it's a cool challenge to try to write a kid's book that works to entertain the adult as well as the child. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and I know you have a ton of hobbies, uh, that, that, you, that you're into. Let's let, let, let's, let's let our audience in on some, uh, beekeeping didgeridoo, yeah. you know, Making How'd you get woodworking, into making didgeridoos, mountain biking, scuba diving, um, collecting marionettes, collecting weird uh, uh, art for the house, and it goes on and on. If my wife was here, she'd rattle off about 20 more. Um, so, okay. yeah. I, I, but you know what? That's what keeps you young is just learning new things, learning. You know, I love the process of discovering something, finding it interesting, and then learning everything I can learn about it from the bottom up. And yeah, do I get tired of it at some point? I do. And I pick something else up. Is that a crime? You know, is that a crime? If it's a crime, I'm a criminal. Put me in jail. So, <laughs> so um, let's talk about changing careers or swerving careers at a, you know, at, at your age, at our age, because we're both doing it, right? I right. recently right. just changed right. what I'm doing. So what, what inspired you to do that? And how are you, how is it going? I mean, for me, it's it's a simple fact of the matter that I'm a 54 year old man. I have a great job. It's a physical job. Um, it, it's a lot of travel. And at some point, 
you know, either I'm going to say I can't do it anymore or they're going to say you can't do this anymore. So um, the idea of retirement doesn't really interest me. The idea of doing something that I love to do that I can do until I'm, you know, draw my last breath, that interests me. I don't, you know, I, 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 you know, we've all been through COVID. I don't know if anybody had to quarantine. I had to quarantine for 14 days. I wasn't even sick. I just had to, I, I wasn't sure. So I went away from my family. It was awful 14 days with nothing to do. I, if I thought if this is retirement, I don't want anything to do with it. So, um, but I want something to do that I take personal pride in. I enjoy, I can do from home. I can really make people smile. So, you know, that's where I'm going. I'm, I'm not planning on stopping my day job anytime soon, but I would love to do a slow transition over to something that I really love to do. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm in the process of, of trying to do. Brian, let's talk about your books now. Uh, let's talk about Ferdinand the Fur Dresser first. Uh, I think we're going to see a picture of it in a second. Um, how did you come up with the title? What does it mean? And uh, take us through it. Uh, Ferdinand the fur dresser, he is the fur dresser to the stars of the zoo and, and the wild animals as well. Somebody has to keep those animals looking nice. So when you go to the zoo, you're like, wow, look how beautiful that tiger is. Look how beautiful that, uh, the giraffe is. So, uh, how did I come up with the idea? I think I was washing my dogs one day and was thinking about, you know, dog groomers. And, and I thought, you know, well, you know, there's gotta be somebody that takes care of the animals at the zoo and makes him look beautiful. And I just came up with this idea of uh, Ferdinand and he's very much in demand. And uh, it's, a, it's a really fun book. And, uh, and I tell you what, I, I, the, the illustrations in this book, which I did not do, are amazing. Um, I found a woman um, and her name is Yvette Gilbert and she is amazing. I don't want to put her over too much because I don't want people to hire her so I can't get her to do my job. But honestly, she's on Fiverr and she just reads my mind. I give her the concept, what I want, and she over delivers every time. So, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a super fun book. I actually have two sequels in the works. So hopefully it takes off and people want to see more of Ferdinand. Uh, and his, uh, he's in the next book, he has a new assistant and his name is Geraldo. So... I, I think we have another picture, uh, a goat's class picture uh, from the same book. Absolutely. Uh, the goats got a little upset because their fur was kind of stinky from uh, the petting zoo, the children's grubby fingers. So he had uh, Ferdinand com create a customized shampoo. And uh, it's a awesome. perfect example of me asking uh, Yvette to, to give me a picture with some ca calculations on a chalkboard and a couple of goats. And the character and the, the faces and, and just the personality she gave each goat and how she over delivered this picture. Uh, I just, I love it. It just cracks me up every time. Um, is there someone that you know named Ferdinand? How'd you come up with the title? Uh, fur, Ferdinand, <laughs> pretty simple. <laughs> no, hair, hair, although. So I, I, you know, I, uh, it just seemed appropriate. Um, so, uh, is the book out yet? Is it available? Where can people get it? It is not out. It is not available. And that is, um, it will soon be, I'm going to probably publish it through Amazon. As we talked about, uh, I've kind of been weighing between trying to get an agent and going that route, but you know how sometimes it's like if you're trying to get somewhere and the best route is the highway and you're just stuck in traffic. And you decide, you know what, I'm going to get off the highway. I'm going to take the surface streets. Even though it's probably going to take me the same amount of time, I'm going to be moving. And that's the way I look at it. I could sit here and send out uh, all kind of manuscripts and query letters and get and wait six months and get rejections. Or I could just do it myself. And maybe the reward won't be as great. Or, But at least I'll be doing the process myself. So that is what I'm, I'm starting on. Um, marketing through social media and those types of things. Um, and I'm super excited. Uh, hopefully it'll be out within the next month. Awesome. Awesome. Tell me about like the, the creative writing process. Do you ever, you know, hit writer's block? How does it work? And like when you sit down to, to write, do you, does the idea come to your head and boom, you, you, like tell, take me through the process. Honestly, I'm sure it's different for, from everybody, but for me, um, the creative writing process, it can be a, a bit of a, 
a daunting thing. Um, I've always, you know, I've always equated writing to sleeping. I can't just lay in my bed and go, I'm asleep. I can't just sit down and go, I'm writing. So as a man who flies 150 flights a year, I have a lot of time on airplanes, but unfortunately I can't get on an air, airplane and immediately start writing. I need to get into it. It takes me 20, 30 minutes to get into it. But, you know, as far as the process goes, you know, sometimes I just get an idea. I have another uh, story in the works. It's about uh, a, a, an opera singer and his pet cat. And it was, um, um, Cyril was a singer, Samson was his cat. Cyril slept on Samson's le- neck like a warm cravat. That line came to me, and it was about 12 years later that I actually wrote the poem. I had that first line and I probably opened it up and read it and tried to get a second line for almost 12 years. And all of a sudden one day it just flowed and it's, it's a great poem. That's going to be a great book and it's very funny. And uh, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not an easy process, but for me, it's just a matter of you get an idea or you find a couple of words that fit together really well and you get them down on paper because you can always go back and fix them. But if you don't get it down on paper, you'll lose it. You'll say, what did I say? What was I thinking? But once it's down on paper, you can always read it. And and yeah, even though I talked about the flights, I do oftentimes pull up my various and sundry uh, writing projects that are in the works. And I just start reading them. And I just, you know, I'll nip off a little bit more until I get frustrated. And then I put it away. And one day, all of a sudden, it just starts flowing. And, and, and you get something. So that's how it works for me. Probably different for everyone. But that's my process. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I know we have some pictures of uh, two other books you've written. Uh, let's talk uh, about Bobby Lou. Uh, here we have a picture of it. Bobby Lou Batnick. Uh, tell us about this story. This this is a this is a not a picture book, but actually I, I actually will probably within the next couple months, I want to re-release it with some illustrations, sort of chapter heading illustration. Um, but this book is kind of neat. It's like a novella. It's about 80 pages long, and it happens in two time periods. It happens in 1916 when Bobby Lou's great great uncle and great great, uh, I guess, grandfather, uh, they come over from Europe and they come through Ellis Island into New York City, and they, you know, sort of have go through some trials and tribulations to get started as anyone would. That, doesn't speak, you know, English as their as their first language, and and they 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 get in and they you know they try just through sheer determination and will and hard work to do well. Meanwhile, uh, in two thousand five, Bobby Lou's kind of gone through the same sorts of things. She's a very willful young girl, and she, um, you know, not a bad girl, but she does make some bad decisions, and she's kind of going through her process uh, in in school. And what is really cool about this book is there is an element that ties her great, great uncle and grandfather to her in a very real, believable way. It's a it's a it's sort of a living element that ties them together in the end. And I I love the I love how it ends. I love, you know, I I love the story, Um, but I would love to do to get some some illustrations done for it. Um, I have some crazy images in my mind. I like I said, I have a person that can bring them to reality. So. Um, but it's a cool book, but it is, uh, it is about 80 pages long. So it's kind of a novella. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, we, we have, uh, another book here also, the, the Christmas pickle. Take us through this Christmas one. Pickle. Christmas pickle. Well, there's a, there's a, a Bavarian tradition of hanging a pickle ornament on the tree and you hide it in the Christmas tree and, uh, the kids come down and whoever finds a pickle gets a special prize. Well, the, the young lady in the book, Brooke, is very excited because this Christmas is her brother's very first Christmas. In fact, he was born on the prior Christmas. So it's not only Christmas Day, but it's her young brother's first birthday. And she's very excited to share looking for the pickle. The trouble is when they start to decorate the tree on Christmas Eve, the pickle ornament is missing. And there starts the mystery of the Christmas pickle. A Christmas mystery for the ages. So uh, it's a fun book, it's a fun holiday book, and uh, everyone should get one. Awesome, awesome. So, I, tell me, Brian, do you think of yourself as an entrepreneur? You know, Howie, I think of you as an entrepreneur. I think of <laughs> some friends I have at work as entrepreneurs, and I think me of me as someone that looks at. At, at you, at, at several people, my friend Brittany, and I say, man, I want to be like them. They're entrepreneurs. They're go-getters. 
Um, so uh, I'm a wannabe entrepreneur um, trying to follow in the footsteps of some dear friends that really uh, that go get it. And uh, maybe one day I'll feel like I can say I'm an entrepreneur, but maybe not yet. What 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 inspire what inspires you to uh, you know to become an entrepreneur or think of yourself as an entrepreneur? I you know I just I want to I want to have something that is mine that I'm proud of and that you know people respect. Um, it's not for me. It's not about money. It's just about sharing something that I love that I'm really proud of and having people say that's that's great. And, and being able to control my own destiny. Like I said, I don't really want to retire. I just want to do my own business, my own job, and, you know, kind of set my own hours. So uh, I'm really excited. And, you know, I got, to de- I got to dig deep with inside of me to really, you know, it's a lot of work, especially when you have a, a normal job and you're traveling a lot. But, you know, like I said, I have really good uh, sort of mentors, uh, you being one of them, that, uh, that, I, that I watch. And I say, man, if they can do it, I can do it. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited at the process. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so like we told the audience at the beginning of the show, you and I have worked together for nearly 20 years. We have some old photos of you and I. Uh, <laughs> Kurt, I mean, I, I think I still have red hair in that picture. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had red hair for about the first 20 minutes. I knew you. And then it went gray. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, I don't have any hair, so I'm not. Don't, 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 I'm not saying anything. So, and I think we have one more, right? Uh, yeah, that was I, us. I, Remember I where we was, were? Yeah, they were on uh, uh, San Diego, right? Naval? No, I think it was Naval Base Norfolk. Oh, Norfolk. Yes. On a, on yes. a tribute to the troops. Yeah, with Robo. A very so, funny uh, story on the way up. Yep. Oh my, we had a lot of funny stories. There is enough podcast time to tell them all, but uh, we had some good time. So. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I, we're going to put up a shot right now of your website so people can see it. Um, BrianOlay.com. Uh, Brian, are your books available on the website? Can people get uh, more there, information about you here? There's absolutely a link to Amazon for Bobby Lou Badnick and for... Uh, the Christmas pickle, and hopefully very, very soon there will be uh, a link to Ferdinand the fur dresser as well. So uh, that is in the process. Awesome, awesome. One last question. Um, I know you do some uh, voiceover work also. Tell us what inspired you to do that. Honestly, uh, well, to to be be honest, um, I was inspired to do that just because I want to kind of do my own audiobooks and I've done a few audio stories that are uh, you can get on uh, at YouTube um, I, I, I kind of have I love to do poetry from Edgar Allan Poe and uh, different things so I, you know I may not have that classic uh, booming voice but I really would love to do some audiobook work because I enjoy doing different dialects doing different voices and predominantly want to do my own books and make them available, like Bobby Lubadnik. I'd like to make that available as an audio book that I read uh, very soon. It's in my long laundry list of uh, of things to accomplish in the next couple of uh, months, years. Awesome, Brian. Um, so how can our audience, besides your website, get in touch with you if they want to buy your books or learn more about you or, or uh, you know, just how, how can they get in touch with you? Damn. Uh, feel free to email me at brian at the telltale voice dot com um, or go to my website and there's a, a link straight to that email straight to me. Any questions, anything uh, that I can answer for you, uh, feel free. Awesome. Awesome. Brian dot com. Great. Brian, so honored that you were here to join us. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Um, best of luck. I can't, I've read all of your books and I can't re- wait to read the, the next ones. Uh, the first two I, you know, gave to my kids. So I'm um, looking forward to doing the same with uh, this one and your future books. Uh, thank you very much, Howie. It's an honor to be here. You know, I truly, truly thank you for, you know, just taking your time with me. That's awesome. Awesome, Bri. Thanks so much again. All right, Howie. I'll talk Have soon. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. Just want to uh, remind our audience, this podcast is brought to you by our team at VES, customized live stream provider. We provide live stream for broadcast quality, 
meetings, events, shows, sporting events, uh, hybrid virtual meetings, uh, and VES also creates custom content delivery networks. So if uh, you're in need of any of those type services, please reach out to the team at Veridity Entertainment Services, VES, VeridityEntertainment.com. That's it for show number two. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day.